Hello and welcome! My name is Seth and in this series we will be making an entire new Vagante world to explore. We will be doing this in the map editor. So I already got the first area started for this and the way this is going to be formatted is it's kind of kind of use the same formula used in uh, Legend of Zelda games. So I did this one kind of off camera just because uh, I needed to have something to set as first room. I also came up with the name of the, what this world is going to be. It's still like workshopped, so like uh, we can change it to whatever we want. So comment down below if you like the name or if you want to change it, but it is the secret of Grimshaw Woods. You can definitely comment different names if you think that's stupid. It's just a little placeholder for now. So first up, let's save room and let's do a new room. And this is going to definitely need to be resized, so let's size this act to be pretty dang big. Let's just go overkill and see what 100, 100 looks like. Okay, I think we're going to want it a little bit wider than that. There, 150 wide. There we go. So this is going to kind of be the base of the hub world. So let's start shaping it into what we kind of want here. Okay, we got a bit of a base ground set up here. And we're going to definitely be coming in from the uh, left here. So let's put the entrance, let's put it like there-ish. And because we entered coming to a tree, let's make this also kind of like a tree. Then we gotta make the, the canopy here. So this is a cool way I figured out how to layer the tree leaves. First uh, layer far ground. Then go to close ground and continue going down into there and then go back to far ground and there you go. There's your tree. You can have stuff hanging from it like roots and whatnot, but I'll probably go through and do a little bit of uh, finishing touches on things. Now we just need to fill this up with kind of entries into areas. So we're going to want this to look kind of like broken down uh, ruins. So we're going to use this one, which is like the mossy brick kind of style here. And we'll countersink it a little bit. And we'll turn it kind of into a, uh, like a ziggurat type deal here. Okay, and we'll kind of set this up like like so. And we can put a door entrance in there. Now we just need kind of like some sort of support beam because we don't want that to look uh, weirdly unsupported. There we go. That kind of adds the uh, illusion that it's a solid structure. And then we'll just slap a door right there. I know it's kind of weird. There's no actual way to uh, make it so you can just wander into this area. Like, you can't cover up this door. You can cover up doors with the uh, close ground, but there's nothing that really works. Like, you can do that, and then it looks weird. So, we're not, we're just gonna have to, it's just gonna have to look like that. Now, something I always loved in Legend of Zelda was when you're going through areas, seeing things that you can't get to quite yet, but you can eventually. So, we could stick a little chest right there, and then, um, Later on, when we get something like, say, double jump boots, we can backtrack and get to this chest. And then it could have something interesting in it, like a healing potion. Like a regen or something. So yeah, this is one entrance kind of branching off in this hub world. And we're going to have to make... Uh, we're going to have to make quite a bit of them. So we need to fill this hub world up with a ton of cool stuff here. There, so now we got a nice little tree that is sitting up above thing here with the little chest. Yeah, I'll come back and uh, make this a little prettier. Okay, this next idea 
We can have this area limited to needing the grappling hook. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick a tree. I'm going to make this a big bitch. And this can be a puzzle in itself, like a uh, jumping type puzzle that you need the uh, grappling hook to complete. And now we add a large canopy to this bad boy. Okay, that's now all textured. Might come through and finagle this to look a little nicer. But now let's make kind of a little tree fort type deal. Add a little bit of this stuff to make it look a little more homey. And there you go, we got a little bit of a tree fort here. So this is how this is turning out. And then we can also stick another door right here. So then that can take you to a whole different area or a new level. I am going to tidy this up and make this less uh, boring. I'm going to add some stuff to this really quick. And there we go. That's the, the tree all done. Now let's make it more of like a challenge. Uh, let's add some springs into this. So that's spring there, there there and maybe a secret one depending on how evil we want to be now let's go to modify facing left and facing right and do that to the rest of them okay well we made it a little bit more interesting let's uh let's spawn an item here let's uh grappling hook and let's see what this is like okay see this is gonna be a problem the tree's all dark there's a few ways we can fix this. Let's just throw fireflies on the way up. Start them at the center of the tree. There we go. That's a little better. Okay, now let's see. I am not good with the grappling hook. Okay, these need to be stronger. Oh, that's not good though. So if you if you mess it up, you could end up hurting yourself real bad. Oh, okay. Wait, this is kind of this is kind of fun. I like this so far. Let's add a healing statue right there, or we can even make it invisible and stick it right there. It might be semi visible. Um, so yeah, you need the grappling hook to get to this. So this can only basically be used for this puzzle. It could be. It, this could break games. This could break the game later. Uh, but we won't know until later on. Oh, okay, we got to the second branch. Okay, okay, we could definitely do it. But yeah, that's like an insta crap ton of damage. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn it. Okay, so the... It's interesting. I thought the left side... I thought the left side of this tree would be easier... Because if you look at this, it's it had it, it just it looked easier to me, but surprisingly, this side is a lot harder for some reason. I kind of want to keep this here. I'm curious what would happen if someone like swings up and hits it and they shot down. But yeah, that pretty much covers all of that. So here's another interesting uh, little area that can take you into a like a dungeon and the whole dungeon can be like taking place inside of a tree okay next let's build like an underground area here okay maybe do something kind of like this so you're coming along and there's a cave entrance. You can jump over it and continue this way. Or we could just have this flat, but I think I kind of like it more like an opened up cave. So, and then we're going to stick a new level there. 
Now, the difficulty of getting here, I was thinking it would be cool and interesting if this area is stopped by boulder traps. Now, this is an idea that uh, me and uh, Gox came up with. And one, two, three, two, three, one, two, three, and keep doing that. So now if we add, go to entities, let's add an item here and make it a, say, a studded helm. Or a great helm? Yeah, let's do studded helm. And now we're going to add an attribute of boulder protection on it. Okay, uh, I'm pretty sure it's this one. Attri attribute uh, 31, hardhead. Let's go add on to there. Well, that's not good. So if you try to run through here... I don't think there's any possible way to survive that. Okay, it can be skipped. So let's go like this. Now that looks a little bit more impossible. So now let's put the uh, studded helmet on. See if that can make it so you can get in. Okay, this needs to be tweaked. <laughs> okay, there we go. Pretty sure it's fixed. Just did one trap and then had it, like, only one block high most of the way. So if we go test room. You can make it to it. Go test room. Take off the helmet. Yeah. Okay, that works. Uh, we will remove a few of these because they do still deal damage. So if you want to uh, get to the end here, you'd need boulder protection. So that's the the puzzle for getting to this area, which is its own little dungeon once you enter there. For this next one, let's do something that involves water. So let's make like a lake here. And then fill it up with these, which is the uh, water blocks. And then now let's make like an underwater type puzzle here. So you come straight down and let's make the correct part of the puzzle first or uh, maze. Sorry. Okay. So this is the, the direction you'd need to go to get to the new area. Now let's make it more of a maze by having other branch and paths. There. I hope that looks evil enough. So this will be the entire swimming underwater maze but we will we will make it uh worth it so at this end we'll stick a chest right right there so it's early on so if someone does kind of encounter this chest it might give them incentive to look through the entire maze um so it's still kind of evil but we'll give them the chest over there and yeah so basically what's going to limit this place is you will need to have underwater breathing uh because you will not be able to even get close to here now I just gotta fill up the water and I'm gonna make it look a little pretty. So I ended up changing it quite a bit. Uh, I also went through over here and did some more changes and stuff. But now the maze I think is a little bit more complicated but fun. And there is no way to do this without water breathing. Before, the way it was before, you could, you could cheat it and still beat it with uh, damage boosting through everything. But uh, yeah, this is definitely way better. Let's take a quick look at what it's uh, going to look like. So let's g let's grab a ring. Let's make it a uh, ring of Illyrian. And let's add the effects to it, the attributes. So we're going to add breathing underwater to it. And we might as well also add uh, swim like a fish. So yeah, swim. And there we go. Now we've got our water ring. So let's test this out. So you must have this ring equipped to be able to pull this off. So yeah, it gets... Even though I I made it myself, I still get kind of lost testing this out. There we go. And then from here you enter the infamous water level. Okay, let's make this next area require double jump. So we're going to kind of build a cliff here. And you can normally jump three blocks, so let's set it to, I think, that many is right. 
I have a pair of boots here that have double jump on them for testing, so we can just double check all this. Yeah, it looks like you can just make a five block jump. So that works out. I'm just gonna take this up here, fill this in. And we'll kind of turn this into like a cliffside jumping puzzle. So let's stick this one like right here and see if that's a, a jump that can be made. Yeah, just barely. Like this shit without a uh, double jump is not possible. And that's what we want. And we'll make the next jump something awkward. Gotta constantly test all this out to make sure it's all working out. Okay, something like this looks like a good start here. So it's doable. Like you can you can do it definitely with double jump, but it's not very hard. This jump though, you have to like time this one perfect. But it can be done. And then up here will be uh, the new area. And then maybe I'll add some other interesting factors into here. There you go. It's a little, little beautified now, and you got the door up here. I added some of this, um, the haystacks, so it prevents fall damage. I made this jump harder and this jump harder, and I think what we're gonna do here, I think it's a good idea, is let's extend this out. Let's extend it out to about here, so there's a chance to fall in the water not kill yourself right away there we go and there's one last thing i really wanted to do i'm curious if this works i have to test it out but what would happen if we did this and made this even freaking harder okay yeah it definitely makes it seem more difficult dang it yeah this is still very good and hard Ooh, did it. There we go. Okay, so it's definitely doable. I think this, though, should be moved. Maybe to, like, here. And then this one, it needs to be moved, like, right here. That should be a decent little, like, challenge right there. I'm going to do some uh, final touches on it and do more testing. But that's basically the premise of this guy. So this is what we got so far. You come in from here. This is going to be like the first area. So area one. Then down here will be area two. And then down here is area three. And then up here is area four. This is area five on the top of the tree. And... Area six is the final boss, and we're gonna make this a floating island up in here. So let's build ourselves a floating island. There, something like, kind of like this. We'll decorate it up and make it look pretty later. Let's just get the bases for it done. And then it's gonna be final boss business. So we need like, we need to look like final boss business. What would this look like? You know, it's okay. Hmm. I don't know, though. kind of want to make my own thing instead of just copy and pasting. Yeah, maybe we'll do something kind of like this, like floating castle type deal. There we go, this looks pretty good. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want me to change this or what you think uh, would make this look better. Uh, to me, it looks pretty good for now. I might go over it and do some stuff off camera later. 
and fancify it a little bit, make it look more extravagant for like the last area. I want it to kind of not fit in with everything else because everything else is like foresty and this is supposed to be like a foreign type deal. And that's kind of what I want this to look like. It definitely needs work. I need to make it pretty, but for now, let's just work on the mechanics of getting to this door. I was thinking of doing something on the lines of blade traps, and then make them all go horizontal. Alright, and here it is. This is pretty much all done. Uh, I made the castle a little bit more interesting looking. I changed it up a bit, added a little bit of holes and stuff, and then this is the puzzle. And then I added some of this background stuff from the final boss. So, you get these boots, which are the uh, Featherfall time jumping boots. And what you gotta do is you gotta time this business just right to make it up. It's not actually that hard. Coming down is really freaking hard. But yeah, it's pretty straightforward. You just make the right timing and you can get up without getting hurt. It's not as hard as some of the other puzzles. But uh, I think it's pretty good for late game. Then over here, I added this. And had stream coming down out of it. Which feeds into the lake. So in the next episode, all we gotta do is make each area. But uh, every episode will be an area. So next episode, we're tackling this area right here. So feel free to leave comments on what you think it should be like. If I should add certain things. Off camera, I am going to go through and beautify things, make them look even nicer. But that should do for the end of the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, lick that bell. Check out our Discord. Link is in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.